Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at these little units here. This is home automation, pre-internet, pre-Google Home, pre-Alexa, pre-internet, pre-just about everything. These are from Dimplex, who are makers of um, electronic fireplaces and such like that, but... You know, people bought these and used them for lights and all sorts of controls. So this is the receiver unit, polarized outlet that would plug into the wall. And then there's your polarized, non-grounded outlet for your device. And this is the remote control with two buttons. We have an on button and an off button, powered by a 9-volt battery. They're incredibly simple devices. Unfortunately, this particular one, this is the Dimplex uh, 47-1001, was recalled back in 2010 for a cause that kind of likes to heat up and catch the fire and shit. So, if you have these, you know, maybe don't use them. But anyway... If we can uh, zoom all the way up in here, there's a little bit of information on the back here. You can see uh, resistive, resistive load, 15 amp. Incandescent lamp, 500 watt. Motor load, one third horsepower. TV, 400 watt. So that just gives you an idea of the capacity of these guys. Now, We'll go take these over, plug it into the old uh, watt meter, and we'll see what kind of quiescent uh, current it pulls and whatnot. Then we'll take a look on the inside. Okay, we're over on the other side of the bench that you never get to see because it's the messy side. But I figured I'd show it to you anyway just for this. So we're looking at 1.1 watt of quiescent current. And if I press the on button, you hear it click. And it looks like we're down to 0.8 watt. Turn it off. Click off. And it goes back to 1.1. Interesting that it has lower off current, than, or lower on current, than it does off current. So let's take a look inside these little guys. Okay, these are what I, you might call vintage. So let's not expect to find anything particularly sophisticated in here. I'm guessing single-sided circuit board, simple little RF section, uh, maybe one IC to handle encoding and decoding, but really that would be about it. Okay, so, hey, that came apart easy enough, didn't it? All right, let's have a look and see what's inside. Yes. Focus, there we go. All right. So, here's our RF section. We've got a, a simple... Uh, transistor inductor oscillator going on here with some capacitors and there is uh, a couple diodes there's our antenna this is all encased in a uh, wax that's wax wax probably paraffin wax definitely as you can see single-sided board We've got quite a few diodes going here for diode steering but um this is interesting up here. This, I'm guessing, would be how you set the frequencies. From the slight information I can find on these, they are uh, one of 178 frequencies, or 278 frequencies available. So somehow adjusting these jumper pins allows you to determine what frequency it transmits on. Now that chip there, what, what the... What the heck is it? 
MC14502. Okay, I know that chip. That is, um, that's an encoder decoder. So the other one, this, this is the transmit unit. Yeah, this is the transmit unit. The receive unit should have a similar chip. Um, oh my. Look at the look at the corrosion on that. Yeah, and anyway, what I'm trying to get at is it should take a pair of these to encode and decode. Ah, so there's the other side of the board. Nothing terribly interesting. These are the actual switches. I mean, this is just a cheap low end as it gets. Look! Look at that hideous soldering. I mean, granted, this is all, this is probably all hand soldered, but holy hell! What is it Dave says? The bigger the blob, the better the job? No, I, I don't think so. Not at all. All right, so we've seen what's here. Let me put this back together and we'll take a look at the receiving unit. Here's the second side. And this little LED guy wants to be a pain, so you gotta apply a little bit of persuasion. All right, so if we take a look at this, again, single-sided board. Yeah, we'll go ahead and remove it just so we can have a look at both sides and see if the soldering is ghastly on this one. Ay, caramba. Yeah, again, again with this hideous, hideous soldering here. So you see we have kind of, um, now if I'm not mistaken on the transmitting unit, these were straight across, but this one's different. But this is where you'd be setting your frequency. This is our RF section here. There's our receiving antenna. Take a look at that inductor. All encased in wax. Big old dropper capacitor to power that RF section. What is that? 205K 250 volt. Nice relay here, though. Take a look in there. Yeah. Reminds me of, you know, the old points and condensers on a car. Lots of jumpers on this board. No, well, not really. Three. Oh well, yeah, there's not there's not too much to say. It's all encased in that wax. Um, this would be the other MC one four five oh two seven. The other one was a two six. So that would be the other half of that encoder decoder pair. So that's nice. Yeah, there's really not too much to say about these, except they catch on fire, and if you have one, you probably shouldn't use it. But anyway, these were sent in to me by a, a viewer who said they had been sitting in his garage since the recall of 2010, and, well, I can see why. All right, well, I just want to have a look at that, and uh, I thought you guys might enjoy having a look at it with me. I mean, yeah, there's nothing here. We I mean, we have our RF section here. Beep, boop. Then we've got a little dropper here to, in, to uh, power up this relay. The relay connects to the socket for the output. I mean, that's really all there is to it. Um, yeah. So if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.